Hey, I'm Jeff with WYSICOM USA. Today we have with us Dave Martin, project manager at JetWave Wireless. And today we're talking about the MTK 952. Dave, thanks so much for being with us today. Absolutely. So I know that 952 has a lot of applications in music and studio IFB. So let's talk a little bit about the presets that come with it and how we can use each preset to accomplish the goals we're trying to use in the scenarios. Definitely. Inside the box, it's actually one of the first options in the main menu. Allows you to drill down through a number of different factory presets for the 952 itself. Most of those are geared right for the MPR50 IM and will allow you to perform functions either for stereo IM, typical for music applications, yep. touring, versus IFB. Okay. There's two different ways to do IFB, which we'll drill down to in a little bit. Uh, one being narrow band IFB, mono IFB that everyone knows and loves, uh, versus doing a mix mode IFB, which allows you to utilize a stereo car carrier and get twice as many IFB circuits per RF carriers that you have up in your spectrum. So you're being, as Jim would say, a lot more spectrally efficient. Definitely. With an ever-closing spectrum here in the United States. Yeah, you're getting twice the carriers with half the spectral load. It's a win-win. And this is, of course, a wideband product that works from 470 all the way through 800, even though you really only need through about 633, or yeah. 63, excuse me. Definitely. So we can drill down through some of the different menu presets uh, that you're able to get through. Uh, from the main menu, you're going to go into the presets. And for the first one we'll go through will be for a stereo IEM. That's going to be the MPR50 IEM stereo preset. From the front panel, you can see PRS right here, which is for preset. Uh, we can see that MPR50 IEM stereo is loaded right now. But let's jump into the menu and show you where that comes from. We're going to start with the main menu here, top soft key. Jump in there and wheel all the way up to preset. And this will dump us into our preset menu. So in here, we've got MPR 50 IM stereo, which is what we would use for a stereo IM application. Next one down is MPR 50 IFB mono, uh, which is what we would use to use the narrow band IFB mode. We'll go ahead and scroll up to 50 stereo, like we were just talking about, and load it. And that's it. It will confirm that it's done. And then from the main menu, you'll be able to confirm that that is the preset that's loaded. And this is using, and you'll see a little mention of ENS. As we've talked about in different videos, we have a few companding options. ENS is our stereo low latency compander exclusively in the MPR50 IEM That's and right. transmitted through the 952. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about audio levels. Audio settings. Audio That's settings. Right. There's on the front of this, we can already see there's audio level left and right and modulation audio. Right. And modulation level. What let's talk about the difference in those things. So your Left and right refer to your input gain. Um, so that's actually on the XLR connectors here on the back panel. Your modulation gain is in reference to the transmitter itself. Uh, modulation is happening different ways with the different presets we talked about. Uh, in ENS and operating in a stereo mode, modulation source is both the left and right channel. Obviously, we need both sources of audio to be passed to the belt pack. Uh, when operating in the narrowband IFB mode, you're obviously only going to be using the left channel. Um, we'll get into using split mode or mix mode uh, yep. in the IFB uh, a little bit later on as we drill down to that. What you want to see, though, uh, is good dynamic range on both your left and right meters, first and foremost. So you definitely want to be getting enough signal to the input. Now, these inputs, is you and I have talked about in the past, they can take a beating. Um, you can really send a lot of signal to it. We've used them with a number of different consoles. And generally, it's always happy kind of being pushed a little bit. So you, you want it pretty much, not, not holding a clipping signal, but pretty close to, um, to that. You just want to be hitting your yellows on that side, just like any other meter you're used to on a meter bridge. Um, definitely want to be getting on it. And don't want just a few LEDs at the bottom. And within the menu of this, you can also take down the modulation gain independently from your input gain if you need to, depending on your right. scenario. Right. Um, generally speaking, I'm 
going for my input gains uh, most of the time. Modulation gain, I would definitely consider to be more of an advanced setting. Um, and that's just mainly you'd want to pull that down if you were seeing that peak quite a bit on that meter on the front panel. Um, just to give you a little bit of protection before you're going to start clipping in the RF domain. Um, once that signal is clipped out of the transmitter, it's going to be continue to clip all the way to your talent suit. And so that's when they'll start hearing an audible distortion and some problems in your, in that's your signal chain. Yep. Uh, this first menu we get is L gain and R gain, and it's got an 18 dBU peak. This is what we talked about earlier, that you have a lot of headroom in these devices within the specs of inputting audio from a console in any environment. Yeah, console, uh, feeding this from an intercom matrix for doing IFB duty, you're, you're going to be able to adjust it uh, to whatever your source device is uh, without much issue at all. Uh, in this menu, you can see your left and right gain. These correspond to the actual AF level meters over here. Uh, if you have an imbalance or if you're doing a mixed mode IFB. Yeah, and these can be controlled individually. So if you're yeah. kind of doing in a stereo two discrete uh, audio per carrier, you can control them individually if your levels are out of whack and you don't have quite as much control. Like if you're taking one channel from an intercom feed or in another from, from a program feed, and you have some flexibility in your right. gain control. Yep. And then the third one down, modulation gain. This is actually the gain control at the input to the DSP that's built in to the 952. Uh, below that, we can see input is auto. And down here, we can see that is going on right now. Uh, every 952 comes from the factory with both analog and AES inputs. It will automatically switch between the two when in this auto setting, or I can strictly tell it to go to digital or analog. Let's dive into these body packs a little. These are true diversity body packs, mm -hmm. single channel, 470 through 700. So when you power them on, same as all of our receivers, it's going to show you your serial number and then tell you which antenna length it wants to have on that antenna, as well as your battery type. These will accept alkaline, nickel metal hydride, or lithium. Yep. And you can get uh, close to five, six hours on lithiums uh, yep. with a rechargeable pack. Absolutely. So let's dive into this, Dave. Right now, these are set up for stereo, as we can see here at the bottom. Yeah, we just did a quick sync with our 952 to get them associated here. Um, the stock settings right out of the box are going to get you a typical IEM setup. Um, on the front panel, we can see which mode it's in. Now, this is referring to the actual headphone jack. So yep. uh, even if I am doing a stereo IEM out to my talent, if I know that person's going to wear a mono earpiece, I can just put it in mono. They can wear the single earpiece, and they'll get a sum of both channels. Um, other useful information that's displayed on the screen is going to be frequency, your squelch setting, and meters across here. So here we can see we have full RF on our A and B and then a small crosshatch that goes across both of those screens, or both of those bars. That's referring to the squelch level. Next to that is audio, which is empty right now, because we don't have anything playing, and of course, everybody's favorite battery. So let's dive into the menus. How would we go about a sync with these? A sync with these can be done a number of different ways. Um, these devices are able to sync from the receiver back to the transmitter. That's great if you're doing a scan on site, a um, little bit more of an advanced use case. The quickest way to sync these is to put the belt pack into sync mode. We can see is pressing these two buttons right here, exit and up, and you'll see your timer kick off. Now it's ready to be synced. The 952 can be very quickly put into sync mode just by holding the jog wheel for that channel. And that's the same we've talked about in the video for the MPR52. It'll say status all done and then tell you the name of the transmitter that you just synced it to. Yep. So then I think that's all we have to talk about doing it in stereo mode. And now we talked about putting it into a mono mode and a mix mode. And we also talked about narrow band. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about how that narrow band carrier is different and how we would set up our body packs to work with the narrowband carrier. So when you're switching to narrowband mode on the transmitter, um, and that again is in that preset menu, you'll see the second one down is for MPR50 IEM uh, IFB. 
after you punch that up on here, it will load all the requisite settings that come along that, compander changes, uh, gain changes, and modulation source changes. Uh, then on the belt pack, you're going to go into the advanced menu. So we'll go into the main menu, pressing save, select, and exit at the same time, and head down to advanced. In here, at the bottom of the screen, you'll see op mode. And op mode right now is set to IM. We can then select over to IFB, which is the first option in there. And then you press and hold select, same as our other devices, to save. Yep. And now we exit out, and we see our icon above our audio has changed now. Yes. Um, typical of a microphone pattern icon. It went from a stereo to a mono. Um, another thing that's changed is this light went from blue to green. Uh, that is in reference to the RF that it has and also refers to pilot tone. The narrowband IFB does not rely on pilot tone. Um, that's why the blue light went off. So green, it's on us. We still have RF. It's better than red. Red, we don't have RF. And we can also see that on our meters, we're far above our squelch level. Yeah, absolutely. We've set. Yep. So having set this up for IFB, loaded our preset here. We've gone in, changed our op mode. Um, this is now set up for IFB. I would actually go in and then change some audio settings around. Uh, from our main menu, we'll go up to audio settings. And here is where we can manipulate the headphone amplifier. Change this for mono mode, which I would definitely be doing for an IFB earpiece. Uh, and then I generally do a volume boost. This is similar to uh, high gain settings on other bell packs. And you've mentioned that to me before, is you usually do that, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, you usually do that as a lot of talent doesn't like to have the volume, up, volume knob up very high just as a they want feel it, good setting. Yeah, they want it to get louder sooner, and that is just a confidence builder in the gear um, and in the monitoring system that they have to deal with. Because as we've talked about, these are designed for music in very loud environments. These headphone drivers are very powerful. Yes, they are. Um, it's important to go in and make sure that you do have it matched up with the type of earpiece you're using. Obviously, uh, multi-driver in-ear transducer is a lot different than, say, an IFB button on the back of your shirt collar with an air column going up to your ear. And so with that, let's talk about our, we, we kind of, there are a lot of options out there, a lot of manufacturers who make those plugs to buttons to air. Yeah. Um, what's our recommended, what's your recommended pairing of cables and buttons uh, for that? For specifically for IFB, um, there are manufacturers that make a TRS, stereo connector for this. Um, that helps if it does accidentally get left in a stereo mode, it's still gonna get the audio to the earpiece and thus to your talent. Uh, buttons though have a range of impedances available from different manufacturers. You'll see everything down from a 15 ohm all the way up to 2000 ohm. Uh, you do wanna match that to the headphone driver in here. The headphone driver in here is designed for Stereo headphones, in-ear transducers. It is switchable from 16 to 32 ohm. We run it in 16 ohm, and we pair that with a 15 ohm button from Audio Implements. Um, we found that to set up to work great. I'm not going to say it's uh, rich with mid-bass <laughs> and full-range audio, but it definitely helps audio performance and intelligibility of your interrupt over your program. And, um, definitely a good match for the unit. So Dave, let's talk about this last mode we mentioned earlier is the mix mode. So right now we've got both of our body packs are in the IEM configuration. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about how we would put the rest of it into this mix mode and get that running the way we want to. So for doing mix mode IFB, which is again, still using a stereo carrier, but I'm using the left input as one IFB and the right input as another. On the 952, on the transmitter side, I actually don't have to do anything. You just set it in normal MPR50 IM stereo preset, uh, set your gains, and you're good to go. Because the MP MTK 952 is just treating it as a stereo carrier. Right. We're doing all of our uh, submix, so to speak, inside the, the headphone driver itself and the MPR50. To punch into that, your Belt pack already needs to be in IEM mode. This one is. Uh, we went over IEM mode is in the advanced 
advanced menu from the main menu. But in this case, we're going to jump right into the audio menu. And this is where a lot of the heavy lifting comes and kind of how things work. In here, we can see that it's in stereo mode in balance, but that will actually pan left and right. When we put it into mix mode, that is going to give us a summed mono output. So now okay. instead of panning, it's more akin to a crossfader on a DJ mixer. And we can see that our balance actually changed to mix mode. So if we go down to mix mode, now I've got a crossfader between channel one, which is our left channel in this case, and channel two. And we'll want to change in our settings our quick menu to be on the balance mix setting as well. It depends. Sometimes if you've got talent who's moving around a lot, doing a lot of wardrobe changes, and the pack might get bumped around, I will actually turn that off. Um, so and you'll that, set it to which mix mode they're on and then Exactly. It, it depends on your show. It depends on your talent. Um, and if you need to switch between IFBs, you definitely want the quick menu set up. But, so uh, then if you turn that off, that almost adds a, a well, lock feature to it. Because now with this whole menu, there's nothing Nothing can you can do to. accidentally by brushing it, right. short of turning your volume knob off. Right. And so it works as a lock feature without actually locking your device. Yep. So in our mix mode, we would just pan to one channel or another. You're transmitter one, so why don't you pan to okay, channel let me one? My quick menu back on. Oops. And I'll pan to channel two. Save that. Now I'm set and saved. Yep. And so now I would just show if we were pushing audio to channel one or the left side, it would come to me and not come to you. Yep. And there is no bleed over between those two channels. So now in two carriers, which is what we're calling two transmitter, two frequencies, yep. we have four discrete IFBs. Yep. Killer deal. If there's any other questions we can answer about the MTK952, send us an email to support at wizzycomusa.com. As well, if there's any other topics you'd like to see us discuss, let us know. Support at wizzycomusa.com. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely.